At last, the Gregory rescue boat has arrived at the Magic Island. Towed in by a Euclidean submarine, Johnson's boat has been left to shift for itself just outside the Pier 5 lock and is now being taken alongside Mrs. Gregory's yacht, noiselessly pulled through the water by the underwater magnets. Jerry and Joan are in the submarine which brought Johnson's boat in and are eagerly awaiting the chance to return to the yacht as soon as the submarine is safely in its underwater lock. On the deck of Mrs. Gregory's yacht, Captain Bradford, the skipper, and Mrs. Gregory stand ready to take a line from Johnson's boat and make it fast to the yacht. Now, you just stand over there by the port rail, Pat. Keep your eye on the island for old G-47. He'll come running over here to grab Johnson the minute we get his boat tied up. And I'd like a few words with Johnson before that happens, if I can manage it. I'll watch the island, Tex. I can see the whole pier from here. But I don't want to be too far off to meet Johnson when he steps over the rail. It's my boat, you know, dear, and Johnson's been pretty wonderful through all of this. Yes, you're right, Pat. I'll stand here if you like, but keep a sharp eye along the pier. I'll warn you if G-47 comes uh, along. Skipper. Aye. You'd better come here with me and take Johnson's stern line. Hanson can handle that bow alone, but the wreckage of that mast left nothing here to make fast to. So we'll have to strong arm the line here. Aye. We'll take your stern line here, Johnson. Look lively. Here it comes, then. Tex, that's McLeod. What will G-47 say about this? He doesn't know Johnson. If we have to, we'll introduce G-47 to McLeod and tell him Mac is Johnson. Here, Skipper. Aye. I'll take a turn of this line here. You run the slack out of it and bend the end around something back there. Boat's making very little way. We'll lice her easy enough. Hurry, Tex. Get Mac aboard here and talk to him quietly. G-47 is coming along the pier now. Right, Pat. Make it fast here, fore and aft. Snub those lines tight. Come aboard, Johnson, over the rail and snap it up. Oh, I'll be with you this minute, Captain Bradford. My compliments, Mrs. Gregory, and your help. Thanks, McLeod. Now, we've got to give you some quick orders. I'll go meet G-47 and talk to him as long as I can before he gets here. Hurry, Tex, you'll only have a minute. Now, listen, Mac. This may sound crazy to you, but I'll explain later. You're Johnson. Get it, Mac? You're Johnson. Oh, that's what Johnson told me. Very good, then. I'm Johnson. Good boy, Mac. And the reason you're Johnson is because you've got to meet a man right now. He's coming with Mrs. Gregory. And you've got to make him believe you're Johnson. Our lives depend on it. I'll explain it all later. Well, what about my accent? I've been told I've got a bit of the healing on the tongue. Well, uh, have, have a sore throat. Anything. This man has heard Johnson's voice over the radio dozens of times. I now, don't talk much. Right around behind this cabin, G-47. Captain Bradford is talking to just Mr. Johnson. I've got it, Mac. Listen. The oil fumes and the leaking tanks. Your throat. Horse. I, I got you. I'll give you a full report later, Captain. When I get these oil fumes out of my throat. There they are, G-47. Oh, Tex. Yes? Oh, oh, yes, Pat. I was just telling Johnson we'd better put him to bed for a while and look after that throat. Uh, G-47, let me present Mr. Johnson, skipper of this boat. You have been expected, Mr. Johnson. How do you do? Uh, your throat is bad. I... Uh, oil fumes got him when he was fighting those leaky fuel tanks on his boat. He need not speak. It is action I desire. That message, Mr. Johnson? What message? Ah, you know quite well. The message, Mr. Johnson. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Johnson. There's no use trying to bluff G-47. He knows all about the message I sent with the pigeon and how much it means to us. You might as well give it to him. No, Tex, not that. Isn't there something we can do? Don't give it to him, Johnson. But, Pat, we haven't got a chance anyway. We'll have less with that message in G-47's ah, hands. You have no chance under any conditions. Will you give me the message? Or must I tear your boat apart to find it? Come on, where is it, Johnson? I I have it here with me. Well, then give it to him. No, Tex, I won't... Quiet, have... Pat. Why make things worse? Come on, hand it over to G-47. Hurry up, Johnson. Uh, there, there it is, then. <coughs> Johnson, you're choking your, your throat. Yes, it may be serious. Well, you've got what you want, G-47. Will you leave us alone for a few minutes so we can get this man into a cabin and look after him? I will gladly leave you alone for the length of time it takes to work out the formula. Once I have it, then what I do will cease to interest you. Come, Tex. Let's take Johnson into my cabin and see what we can do for his throat. Yeah, your cabin's smashed with that mast. Come on, we'll go in the radio cabin. That would be better. You're welcome to what is left of my yacht, Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Gregory. Stand by to watch those lines, Skipper. Make sure the crew of Johnson's boat have what they need. I'll turn out and help you look it over pretty soon. All right. Look, Tex. 
There goes old G-47, laughing to himself and trotting off down the pier. Yes, he's got what he wants this time. Right in here, Johnson. Now, neither one of you say anything till I have a quick look at this cloth covering in the cabin. Uh, sit over there, Mac. Pat, oh. you sit there. Yes. Well, you can keep a strict watch out that porthole along the pier. All right. Well, cloth seems all tight. I'll sit here where I can look out the other port and see the rail of Johnson's boat. Just in case some smart Euclidean takes a notion to do a little listening. Now, Mac, you can talk. Not too loud, but we're fairly safe in here. This place must be as mad as Johnson said it was. What's all the cloth around the cabin? That cloth is made here on this island. Without it, they could look right through the walls and see and hear all we're doing. This is a fine how do you do. But tell me, you've got the pigeon all right? Yes, and the message is safe. Tex memorized it and destroyed it. Yes, and the bird almost got here too soon. He ought to just come up when he arrived. Come up? Come up from where? We were submerged down inside the island. Submerged? Are you quite well, Mrs. Gregory? <laughs> I don't blame you, Mac. You didn't know this yacht was a submarine, did you? What's it all about, Captain Bradford? Well, you see, Mac, we were taken into a lock and submerged with the whole island when that fleet of battleships was maneuvering around here. But never mind about us. Tell us how Johnson managed to get away and where his radio signals have been coming from all this time. I'll see who it is. Remember your sore throat. Yeah. Come in, Joan. Well, where's Jerry? Oh, Mother, dear. Joan. Oh, I am so happy to see you again. And I'm happy to have you, my dear. Where's Jerry? He was not allowed to come at this time. What's the matter, Joan? Kid talk himself into trouble? Oh, I think not, Captain. But G-47 took him to the chemical laboratory. There is some important experiment going to be performed. Yes, I'll say there is. Yes, dear. G-47 thinks he has Texas formula this time. Yes. I saw your other boat. And, of course, Mr. Johnson is a prisoner. They got the formula from him. Hmm. They got what they think is a formula. And they got it from a man they think is Johnson. But it isn't, and he isn't. I do not just understand that, Captain. I don't blame you, dear. Tex certainly mixed it up. Oh, I'm sorry, Mac. Mr. McLeod, this is my daughter, Joan. How do you do? Ah, uh, it's a pleasure, Miss Gregory. And your mother really found you here on this island. Right, Mac. We've got what we came after. The thing now is how to get away. Where is Mr. Johnson? This is Mr. Johnson, dear. But you just said he was Mr. McLeod. That's who he is. But he's also Johnson, as far as G-47 and these Euclideans must find out. For just as long as we can keep it quiet. I do not understand it at all, Captain. Well, Joan, dear, a great many things have happened to us since you and Jerry went out on that submarine. But the most important of all was the arrival of a pigeon from Johnson's boat. Oh, one of the little pigeons came here, then. But how did it find the yacht? You were in the submerged lock then, were you not? Yes, we were, until about a minute before the pigeon got here. And luckily for us, G-47 wasn't around when the bird landed. And was there a message on the pigeon, Captain? Yes, Joe, a very important message. How far out was the boat when Johnson got the pigeon off, Mac? Uh, a boat, a uh, hundred and fifty miles, Captain. Hmm, then he's too far away for these men to harm him now. Ah, uh, that he should be. The... It was a fast little boat he made the transfer to. And they ought to be many miles from here by noon. Then Mr. Johnson is not on his boat. Was not on it when the submarine towed it in here. No, dear. Johnson transferred from his boat to another which was passing. And for the last couple of hours, he's been running for Los Angeles at top speed. Yes, you see, Joan, you and Jerry missed a few things by being in the submarine. When this yacht came out of the submerged lock, we saw the pigeon from Johnson's boat fluttering around trying to land. He got into the coat just as we reached the stern. The message said Johnson had transferred to another boat with a radio and would try to keep sending messages just as if he was on his own boat. Then Johnson was gaining all the time it took to get his boat in here without G-47 suspecting that anything was wrong. Exactly, Joan. And to slow things up even more, Johnson pretended his fuel oil tanks were leaking and the boat would have to be slowly towed in here. But the tanks were leaking... We followed the trail of oil with the submarine. There must have been hundreds of gallons of oil on the surface of the water. Ah, lassie. Hundreds of gallons there were. And it fair broke the heart of Angus MacLeod to open the valves and let it run away. <laughs> oh, 
But that was very clever of you, Mr. McLeod. Now, Mac, listen. I think for the looks of the thing, it might be wise for you to go aboard the other boat. Make yourself uh, look busy with the crew, you know, and you, Pat, might go with him. Yes, Tex, I think that's a good idea. And I would really like to see the members of the crew and thank them for their fine efforts in our behalf. Yes, I've got a few questions to ask Joan. She might have something we can work on after being in that submarine. After a few minutes, uh, you come back, Pat. All right. We'll try to lay a new set of plans before G-47 discovers that my formula is still safely beyond his reach. Uh, pardon. We would be shoving off, then. I hope you can see your very clear out of all this, Captain. It's too mad a business for you. I'll be right back, Tex. Oh, hello, Jerry. Hello, Mrs. Gregory. I got some news for you. Well, I've got to go over on the other boat with Mr. Johnson now, Jerry. You go on in with Tex and Joe, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, Mrs. Gregory. Hello, Johnson. Hey, Tex. Boy, oh, boy, have I got the news. Yeah, we've got some for you, too, Kit. See yeah? that man with Mrs. Gregory? He isn't Johnson. The G-47 thinks it is. And Johnson's safely on his way back to Los Angeles on another boat. Is that not wonderful, Jerry? Yeah, swell. Well, you don't see much surprise, kid. I thought that would be mighty big news to you. Oh, it would be, if I hadn't figured it out already. You what? Yeah. You remember, Joan, that I told you that submarine commander was going to be on our side? Yes, but I think you were mistaken, Jerry. Yeah, but I wasn't. I got a minute to talk to her where nobody could hear us. And she said she had figured out that those last messages of Johnson's weren't coming from his boat at all. You mean that woman commander knew that and kept it secret from G-47? Yes, sir. And do you know what that means? It means that she's on our side. And with Johnson safely on his way back to Los Angeles, and that girl helping us on the island, we're a cinch to get away from here. Right, kid. Nothing can stop us now.